Well, since Senator Danny Noe's death last December, the tributes for the political icon have been overflowing. But what was he like as a father and grandfather, and where will his political possessions go? Well, his son Ken is here in Hawaii to help initiate the Inouye Project, an agreement between the University of Hawaii and the Library of Congress to prever preserve the late senator's congressional papers and other possessions. And Ken Inouye joins us now for an exclusive interview. Good morning, Ken, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. It's very good to be here today. So you've gone through an incredible amount of stuff, boxes, boxes of full of his things, political possessions, military possessions. How will it all be preserved? Well, um, you know, UH and Library of Congress are, are, have entered into this partnership, and they are working together to ensure that all these materials are, being, are going to be preserved and cataloged in such a way that uh, people can enjoy them for generations. It's now, quite exciting, it really is. Now, when you're at home, uh, you have said that you pretty much kept the political talk outside of your home. So what was it like for you to actually go through some of these things and see this firsthand? Um, it was really quite cathartic, actually, because, um, you know, as, as we were going through, as I was, you know, with the staff at times going through a lot of this stuff, you know, I started to realize just how how much work this guy was doing on an ongoing basis and you know as a result I started I started finding out more about what he was spending his time on during his during his workday because as you mentioned there was a standing rule in the house which was unless he brought up work once he came home there was no talk of work mm -hmm. it was up to him whether he wanted to talk about work so um, a lot of times he didn't talk about work he talked about movies he talked about TV he talked about cars whatever but um, Finding out how much time he was spending, you know, what he was doing at work really made me realize just how amazing it was that he was there as much as he was mm -hmm. as a parent and a family man. Now, it, we have some video that probably hasn't been seen uh, in public before, and this is of uh, your dad and Maggie, who is now three years old. She used to call him Pa or Grandpa Dan. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, about their relationship and, and how he was so happy when she was born? Oh, Dad, <laughs> he, was, he was thrilled about um, becoming a grandfather. Um, I, think that, I think that if there was any one regret that he may have had was that he just didn't have as much time as he might have liked to spend, you know, more time with her. Um, but he really did make the most of the time that he had, you know, to spend with her. And... Uh, he, he clearly loved every minute of it. Yeah, she, so. Again, she's only three years old. Uh, what have you told her of her grandfather so far? And what will you say to her in the future about her grandfather? Well, um, you know, right now, her understanding of what made Grandpa a cool guy, so to speak, is that, you know, he played piano really well. She loved to listen to him play piano and that he had his picture, a picture of him taken with Elmo from Sesame Street. <laughs> because, you know, Elmo's a very happening person in her, in her life, so that makes Grandpa Dan important. But we've, we're planning on just basically let it, allowing it to be a very organic sort of uh, learning process for her. Because, you know, at this point in time, you know, she's, she's three years old. She doesn't necessarily understand uh, the democratic process, a representative <laughs> right. government, and and you know, um, legislative process, and you know, dropping a bill and whatnot. So, you know, we're just going to allow it to to be an organic learning process for her. And again, you know, dovetailing back to uh, the University of Hawaii uh, Library of Congress partnership. Um, frankly, being able to bring her to UH in the future so that she can kind of see firsthand what he had been working on on behalf of the people of the state of Hawaii. It's really quite exciting. You know, so many people see your father as an icon and as a military hero, but what is your favorite personal story of your father? <laughs> I got to tell you, it's hard to narrow it down. It, it really is very hard to narrow it down. Um, the guy, he, he did so much. He was such a huge part of my life, as any father, you know, um, would and, you know, should be. But I mean, you know, I, you ask me the question, I can't pick. I, I think of, well, he took me to my first concert, which was um, Kiss oh. in 1976. <laughs> 
Destroyer Tour, full makeup, December 19th, wow. 1976. Your dad was a KISS fan. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> he he uh, just took you there he, as a chaperone. <laughs> he, he took me. None of, none of my friends None of my friends wanted to go, um, but he knew I wanted to go, so, so, you know, he said, pick up a couple of tickets, we'll go. And, and we went. He took me to my first uh, Samurai film here, here in Honolulu at Toho Theater. It was... Uh, Lone Wolf and Cub Baby Cart at the <laughs> River Styx. My mom wanted that to happen because she knew that if I learned how to read the subtitles, I'd be learning how to read fast. Oh. So it was an, a learning experience, too, on that, in that regard. I mean, you can't narrow it down. Well, Ken, it's so wonderful to hear these little tidbits about your father. What a wonderful man and just a really cool guy as well. Ken Inouye, Absolutely. thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank we you really very appreciate much. your time. Thank you. And to see this video again, you can head to the top video section of our website, KITV.com.